Okay. Hey guys, this is so weird talking to myself uh, at a camera, but I'm gonna do it. Um, hope you guys are all safe and healthy. Uh, wanted to give you an update on a new protocol we're gonna start tomorrow. Um, so we're gonna turn the phones on tomorrow. So we're not gonna do the message service anymore. And so we'll, Kathleen will be fielding calls. Um, when these calls come in, or when she's making outbound calls for upcoming appointments and deciding what to do with those patients or other outbound calls, a few things could happen and I wanna walk through this triage really quick. Uh, the first thing is that she'll just push out the appointments that were scheduled for another two months uh, or when they're comfortable with doing that. She'll keep the same audiologist when she does that, okay? The second thing that can happen is they have a problem and that's why they're calling or they might just mention that over the phone. If they have a problem, Oh, maybe she could solve it over the phone, right? They need, uh, you know, change their wax guard or, or domes or something like that. That's more simple. If it involves something more involved, uh, it's funny to say, uh, we want to talk about the drop-off service that's been actually going really well, where they can drop off the devices. And we have, we're saying we have a one-day turnaround. Usually it's less than that, but if they drop them off, like somebody dropped off this afternoon, uh, they'll be ready to go by tomorrow, okay? Or they can, she can text one of us, whoever the audiologist is, and say, please call this patient and try to figure out what's, what's going on. Finding that this is the most efficient way to do this. From that phone call, you might solve it over the phone, walking them through a problem or an issue, really understanding what, what that problem is. Um, secondly, it might transition actually into a teleaudiology session. This doesn't necessarily have to be a video session. It might just be an exchange of pictures or um, a video or something like that, or activating Resound Assist that I've used. Um, I haven't used any of the other ones yet. Um, or maybe into, uh, you know, like I said, like the council ear um, video session or even just FaceTime. Um, or, you know, maybe something else in between. Obviously, they need to have a smartphone or they need to be comfortable with that level of having a camera if they're gonna do anything with a video, which more people are doing that now because they have to. So that's a good thing. Um, and then hopefully we solve the problem there. If they do, if we do solve it, I'm gonna ask you to make a follow-up, excuse me, a follow-up appointment or call the office to do so, okay? Obviously we're using council here now, so we're not using cycle. Cycle's still up to, uh, activated, but we're not really using it anymore. Or you might find that they need to come into the office. And this is where I'm finding that some patients are perfectly fine, but you want to let all the patients know that we have a very strict protocol put in place. They're going to have to fill out a questionnaire and read a statement and sign that statement. Uh, actually, before they do that, they have to wash their hands. They have to wear a mask. Um, we'll be wearing masks. Everything's wiped down before and after each patient. Um, so it's a very strict protocol that we have here to keep everything safe and clean and, and keeping everybody healthy as best as we possibly can. So knowing that, what I've found is there's some people that are kind of asking, is there anybody else in the office when they're there? No. Um, who's in the office? Me, Kathleen, and that patient. Um, you know, so it's a, it's a very, we're minimizing any kind of patient contact um, whatsoever and really any contact at all. Uh, I will say wearing the mask, you know, uh, number one, if you use the microscope, uh, your, your, uh, your kind of hot air goes up into the, the eyeglass pieces. So it steams everything up. So you got to think about that. And also, uh, I tend to just kind of hold my breath when I'm doing autoscopy or getting anywhere close to them, obviously wiping, having them place the devices on a wipe, wiping them completely clean with, with or without gloves. Uh, just, just following good protocol there. Um, anyways, it just kind of lets them know that we're taking that very seriously. If they do need to come in, if they don't want to come in. That's fine. But then we're a little bit tied as far as what we can do. If they don't want to come in. They might have to do a drop off and then something remotely. Okay. So kind of take, you know, kind of take it as, as it goes. But the third thing that could also happen from these, uh, interactions when she's calling or they're calling us is that there might be an opportunity where they have six-year-old hearing aids, or they have a warranty that's, you know, out to date or out of date, and um, maybe they want to extend that or get something new, or or the repair is going to cost a lot. 
um, or they have an insurance benefit. This is a situation that where we could, she can text one of us to say, hey, here's an opportunity that maybe they want to get into some technology or they can do some remote stuff, um, remote programming or streaming to their iPhone or rechargeability or, um, you know, all the other features that, that would come into play. So, um, and what I'm getting into now is looking at the ability to do actually a pre-programming curbside um, service as well. Uh, I will say that for new patients and other patients that are coming in for an evaluation, we can now email them the questionnaires beforehand and get those back. Then we could actually have the session either over a telephone or a video call uh, before they even walk into our office. So it's a new way of thinking about how we do things here and that we're going to have to embrace that, um, that this is going to be a new uh, norm that we're going to do. So, um, so that is that. You may have questions. Feel free to ask. I thought this is the first way to start this with a video to explain the chart and the protocol. And then we'll be following up with a group um, uh, meeting over, over like Zoom or something. So hope you guys are all staying safe, healthy, and um, I miss seeing you guys. Uh, and uh, we'll be in touch. Take care.